What's going on, Lions fans? Welcome to the Pride Detroit YouTube channel. I'm Miko, joined by my guy Morgan here. And Morgan, we're going to do something that we haven't done since the season ended. We're actually going to get back to a couple of film breakdowns. With free agency kind of kicking off, the Lions have signed some really impactful players uh, the last week and a bit. And so the best way, I think, you know, obviously we have articles up on the website breaking down some of these players and what they've done well. You even have an article, a couple articles breaking down some of these players and, you know, again, showcasing what they do well on, on, on the field. So what we're basically going to do today is get back to what we've always kind of done is go to the film on some of these players. And we're going to start with probably the Lions biggest acquisition this off season and DJ reader and just deep dive into what he does well and, and why he's such a key piece, you know, for the Lions to have picked up. And once you start looking at the, at the film, Morgan, it's easy to see why he's probably one of the best defensive tackles in the middle, right? Yeah, I mean, he's the biggest, both literally and figuratively, right? Like, Reader is a unit, man. When you see him walk around 6'3", 335, uh, just an immovable object in the middle of the defense. But more than that, he generates a lot of push, too, right? Like, we were, when you watch his film, it jumps off. Like, he's resetting the line of scrimmage. Uh, he's driving interior offensive linemen into the backfield and creating chaos and Watching his film was a lot of fun. I, I had a good time watching his film. Yeah, and I think our audience is going to really enjoy it too. So let's go ahead and, and kind of jump into it right here. Um, starting with the first and 10 play, and this is, I feel like in a nutshell, this is what DJ Reader is all about, right? Dominating the, 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 the line of scrimmage and making plays, whether it's on the running back or on the quarterback. Yeah, man, and you he lines up. Uh, all over, you know, you can line him up at the zero tech directly over the center, uh, three tech lined up uh, on the outside shoulder of the guard. You know, he, he has some a lot of versatility uh, in the middle, but where he's creating chaos right here is it just I love it because it's, he's going against Evan Brown, a uh, former Lions uh, backup center and starting for Seattle and just doesn't really have a chance blocking DJ reader with one person's uh, not advisable. Um, he gets his hands into Brown's chest, extends that left arm. And this is where Reader's special, right? Because because he's so strong and, you know, just powerful at the point of attack, excuse me, he can really peak, right? So he this is how you occupy multiple gaps. And this is what uh, defenses, uh, what people are talking about when they're talking about two gapping. So he can control his man and he can peak on either side of that shoulder or on either side of that uh, offensive lineman. So... He sees where the ball is going, gets over across uh, Brown's face and makes the tackle. And you see this time and time again when you watch him on film, right, Miko? Yeah, this is textbook, you know, defensive tackle play. Um, specifically, again, like you're talking about, if you have a guy that is looking to two gap and, and you're looking for a guy that can occupy space and read and react, DJ Reader is, is absolutely the type of defensive tackle that you want to study. And this type of player, I, I really do think is going to make things so much easier for the Lions defensive line because you no longer have to put Aleem McNeil in these types of situations. Aleem can be more of a, an attack style, you know, three tech and really just work on getting into the backfield, cleaning up some of these run plays. But DJ Reader can be that guy that just occupies space and prevents, you know, offensive linemen from, from getting up field and from running backs, picking up additional yards. Yeah, the entire time I watched him, when I was watching even just his 2023 film, so last year, I never once saw him get uh, you know relocated uh, backwards, no vertical push from the offensive line. He's going to hold his spot. If it's a single block, he's usually going to relocate them into the backfield. Uh, occupies double teams better than maybe anyone I've ever seen on tape dating back to like Vince Wilfork uh, with the Patriots and Texans. Um, and this next rep, this is some old school stuff. So for interior defensive line play, you're going to see Reader. This popped up a couple times on film. Um, he goes to a knee in the middle of the play, and you're going to be like, why is he doing that? And he's doing that because he's getting a low center of gravity when he's getting doubled, and it allows him to not get pushed back or moved anymore. And the moment he does that, he's able to take his 335-pound frame, pop back up off one knee, and make the play so he's going to attack you what you do here is you attack the guy on your keying you throw your body weight into him and at the same time you throw your hips and your butt into the guy that's trying to double you 
and watch it from this uh, from the end zone here. I love this angle. So you'll see him circled in red, and then watch him. He's going to attack 63, throw his hips and his butt into the into the double, and makes the play. So you see this a couple times, and you're like, did he just go down to a knee? That's some old school. Like, it's still taught that way. I texted one of my boys who really knows ball, and he's like, yeah, I still teach it that way. So, yeah, I know you know about this, Miko. This is good stuff. Yeah, man. And it almost like I when you and I were like kind of breaking this down, you know, off camera, it looks like a little bit of deception, right? Because the person that's helping Evan Brown with this double team, like he thinks like, okay, cool. Like DJ readers now off balance. He's on a knee. I can now move to the second level. And in actuality, like no DJ reader now can even more so just focus on getting off this block, which he does very easily and gets right back to Kenneth Walker to be able to help make this tackle in the backfield. Like, that's some savvy defensive tackle play. And again, it's something that this Lions defense needs a lot of because a lot of last year, you had a lot of guys just coming off of blocks, screaming up field, losing contain, not really knowing where the ball carrier was. With a guy like DJ Reader, you don't have to worry about those things. Yeah, you see it all the time when you're watching him on film. He's very aware of what an offense is trying to do. Um, uh, a lot of the eye candy is not going to work because he's, you know, he's got a great vantage point. He's right there on the ball. So it's a little bit easier from a defensive tackle standpoint, especially if you're a DJ reader and you can just use your superhuman <clears throat> Godzilla strength to just peer by and look at, look at, uh, what's going on in the backfield. So you see that time and again, and, uh, yeah, he, he has more juice too. That's what really popped off to me is yes, he's the best interior run defender in football but he has more upfield juice than people give him credit for. And he's going to be the reason that Aiden Hutchinson and others, Josh Paschal, hopefully James Houston, uh, rack up more sacks next year because he's a good teammate to rush with. He's going to be sound in his rush lane principles. He's not going to, to your point, Miko, he's not going to jump out of a gap and allow somebody to run around here. So this next rep is good because it's a little bit of a double. They try to chip him. But he just keeps those feet moving and uh, ends up falling at the feet of Watson. And they create a bunch of chaos and good things happen and create chaos against the offense, right? Yeah, this is another thing that, again, I think is always important for fans to keep in mind. I know we love, you know, again, when, when defensive linemen, you know, are able to generate a sack or get a hit on the quarterback. But sometimes being able to just draw a flag or in this case, force uh, uh, the quarterback into a really bad throw is just as good and that's exactly what dj reader does here like you're saying being able to take his man one-on-one -on -one initially drive him far enough into the backfield to where another teammate has to help and then on top of that you know now deshaun watson has to be on the move and make a bad throw this is again what you want your defensive line to do yeah and that's where reader excels he's gonna he's gonna do things the right way and that's why teams you know are covet uh, an interior defensive lineman like reader he's gonna do everything the right way against the run against the pass and uh, the thing that kept popping up was if you don't double team him whether it's against the run or the pass it's it's a problem he's going to i don't know who's going to be able to block him one-on-one -on -one, especially when he puts his hand in your chest and he just decides he's going to run through you because what are you going to do it's like almost like if for my monster movie fans out there um the new godzilla movie comes out at the end of this month i believe he looks like godzilla out there man he just is running through like buildings and uh this next one is a is a good one too man i love this uh this pbu um go ahead miko i was gonna say i also wanted to just like double down on that like to your point that you were making earlier too about like how this type of like pass rush this type of player makes life easier for guys like elaine and aiden like yeah. These last couple of years, Aleem and Aiden are, are getting the bulk of the double teams, right? And so now you have a guy like DJ Reader and who's been in the league, who's been basically, you know, being Godzilla to the AFC North and, and, and a lot of the AFC, you know, for his time in the league. Well, now you have to really pick your poison, right? Do you want to put two guys towards Aiden Hutchinson knowing that you have this monster in the middle? Can you afford to put two people, you know, on this guy knowing Aleem McNeil is also lined up right next to him and really kind of stepped up his play as a, as a pass rusher, you, you, you as an offensive coordinator and as an offensive line are going to have so much more communication, not to mention if the Lions still sprinkle in some of those blitz packages, that's, it's a lot to deal with Morgan. <laughs> yeah. And exactly Miko. I love that you brought that up because it, you know, Aleem, 
uh, Aiden, the linebacking unit, the secondary, everyone benefits from Reader. Um, in my article that I wrote at Pride of Detroit, I called him a force multiplier, like someone you put back, put in the middle of your defense. And for my video game people out there, he's like a buff, right? Like he's going to yeah. buff ev everyone else's stats get buffed up a bit because they play with DJ Reader. And this is a good example here. Um, you know, they double him. This is second and nine. And he knows, like, he's like, okay, I got a double. I'm just going to watch Watson here. And then at the last second, I'm going to stick my big old Paul up in the air and try to get a piece of this thing. And he does it, man. This is some crazy, this is some F1 racing reaction mm -hmm. time. And uh, I, he hits uh, Watson with the finger wag. And I started cracking up when I was watching film. Watch him hit it. And then he hits Watson. <laughs> Dude, this is and so again. This is another thing that, like, is all the of all the good things that we have to say about DJ Reader. This is another one of those things that I think is worth keeping in mind. Is like his size. Like we talked about it at the top, right? He's a mountain of a man. And as much as I love Aleem, and I think Aleem is fantastic, even at the size that he plays at, Aleem doesn't quite have the the stature that a Reader brings to your defense. So these types of plays can become more readily available. And I think the Lions have kind of been looking for this type of person to pair up with Aline. You know, you look at the fact that they drafted Levi Onzerik, and I think Levi's somewhere in the range of 6'3", 6 6'4". 6 Broderick Martin is massive. I think all the, I think he's like 6'5". I think they've been looking for guys that can be more disruptive with their size. And so, again, you know Reader is the type of player that's going to – uh, attract double teams, but the fact that he has enough headiness to know, like, hey, I don't always have to play Superman and try and get to the quarterback. I can sometimes just occupy space, read the quarterback, and still get my hand up into passing lanes. Again, it's another um, probably undervalued quality that he brings to your defense. Yeah, and it's he's so good, and this it's where you know, just experience comes in, right, Miko? So he's just intelligent enough to know like i'm not going to be able to split this double team it's second and nine they're probably going to get the ball out quick um and you see that happen a lot like he you can tell he he watches film and he understands what's happening in front of him uh because he he makes these plays where you're like did you have a beat on what was going on here because like it, it otherwise it doesn't make sense that you're you're able to you know make your body move this quick and it helps being as athletic as he is at 335 pounds but you know, at the same time, I feel like some of it's just like he knows ball, right? Yeah, you got to be a student of the game, right? Athletic prowess only gets you so far. And when you're able to understand what teams want to do on certain downs and distances, like you said, like knowing that like, okay, if I'm going to get doubled here and I can't split this, this double team, like I could, he could waste energy, right? Trying to uh, get to the quarterback, knowing though that like, hey, this is probably a quick pass. I'm not even going to be able to get near the quarterback let me just hang back occupy space try to get a hand up yep and like you said it gets in those situations if, if he's on the field next year for second and nine and some of these like you know third and longs too it just decreases the likelihood that you double team Aleem or Aiden because if you do that there are plenty of instances on tape when reader does get a one-on-one -on -one, uh and he's like oh you, you're being disrespectful now and then that's when he he put you know he lets that godzilla stuff show through and he runs through somebody and puts them uh, in the lap of their quarterback that's got to be such a bad feeling i never played guard but yeah we just talk, put, yeah, being I, put on skates <laughs> no like we, yeah we talked about i think like looking at i can't remember what player we were, we were talking about but yeah like whether you know being just like put on skates or being just flat out put on your back like which is more disrespectful I'm not sure. I do believe, though, that if you're ever in a situation where you're supposed to be double teaming somebody and both people just get chucked out of the way, I think both guys got to look at each other and be like, that that just didn't go according to plan. <laughs> yeah. And this is what we got going here. This is some nasty business here. This is just throwing somebody out of the club. I love the you'll see here um, in the end zone angle, but <clears throat> readers lined up. Um, at the two eye, so in the inside shoulder of the guard, and 60 is supposed to uh, seal him off, I'm assuming. He basically gets shucked out of the way, and then 67 has a chance to at least wall off Reader just for a second, and Reader essentially, I don't know, just debos his way through 67's chest and ends up making the play, and there's a big pileup 
uh, which is a, a common occurrence when you're playing DJ Reader because he's just relocating dudes in the backfield and creating havoc. But yeah, this is it doesn't show up on the stat sheet. Like I don't, he's not going to get registered with an assisted tackle or anything, but he makes this tackle for loss, right, Miko? Yeah, gets a hand on Kenneth Walker to at least slow him down. And I like what you said at the beginning. He basically tells number 60 to go find somebody else to play with. Like, literally, like, <laughs> this is not – go find someone else to go look for. And that's literally what 60 ends up doing. He ends up at the second level not knowing how he got there. And it's like, I, I'm supposed to block somebody. I don't know who that is now. But, like, <laughs> that's, that's a true. huge asset to your defense when you have a guy that can basically just, again, destroy what opposing offensive lines want to do. And because, again – because this block, this double team doesn't go the way it's supposed to, 67 can't get a solid block on DJ Reader. So, again, you think you have me blocked. Really, I can just kind of still swipe over you, make a play on the ball carrier, and allow my guys behind me to, to, to clean up everything else. Exactly. And it's a, it's a force multiplier, right? It's one of those force multiplier plays. So he's going to throw 60 out of the club, 74, the right tackle, and 75, they're pulling the right guard and right tackle. There's nowhere to pull because everyone's jumbled up because readers throwing people out the club. And yeah, this is just one of those plays. And that's why you saw uh, Alex Anzalone Lions uh, starting linebacker was so excited about getting reader because it helps, man. I, I think I said that on one of our last videos, but this is huge because it allows people to run free and you can, you can get downhill with your hair on fire because you know, DJ reader has those two a gaps all plugged up. It's all good in there. Listen, I think all the Lions linebackers are going to benefit off of having DJ Reader on this team, but I'm mm -hmm. very excited to see specifically like how Jack Campbell performs because I felt like even coming into the league, what you wanted to do to get the most out of Jack was to be able to keep him clean. DJ Reader yeah. is going to have Jack Campbell looking a lot cleaner out of coming out of games than he probably did this previous year. Yeah, absolutely. And then if you play behind, if your starters are – <clears throat> you know, Hutch, Aleem, Reader, and then Josh Pascal or Davenport. That's a nice, like Anzalone said, that's a nice team. Like, that's who you want getting off the bus. You know, it's DJ Reader, mm -hmm. it's Panay Sewell, it's Marcus Davenport, it's Hutch. You know, make them those are some, Yeah, those are your tone <laughs> setters right there. Those are yeah, your tone yeah. setters. Yeah. <clears throat> so, and then I love this last one, man. I know we were, I think we were both in agreement. I think this is our favorite of, uh, of the clips, but this is just uh, nasty. This is, yeah, this is pure demonstration of power, right? Like powerful hands, like full on display. Yeah, man, you can just see, like, it looks like both his hands weigh probably like 20 pounds of pop here. So he comes off the ball. I, I do think this is a bit, a bit of situational awareness. This is a third and one uh, on the first series when they were playing San Francisco last year. They have use check the fullback in the eye. Um, they're going to fake the pitch here to McCaffrey, but DJ Reader doesn't care. He just takes the center, immediately pushes him back. Like it looks like a whole yard into the backfield. The center slams into Yuschek, and this plays over before it can even get started. And I watched this probably twenty times. I was just like, "Holy cow!" Special. And the thing that I yeah, the thing I love about this play, Morgan, too, is that like I don't know if there was a run play that they could have put together that this was going to work. Right, like it's a it's a fullback dive play, but like even if this had been halfback dive where the fullback is leading, this play doesn't work. If it's toss, it's not gonna work. Like he's mm. off the ball that quickly, displaces the center so quickly that anything that I think the the 49ers would have tried to do in any type of short yardage run here just wasn't going to work. And this is just another element that again the Lions get to add to their defense that Again, a, a unit that was already so good at defending the run last year is going to be that much better. Again, barring injury, a lot of these guys are going to stay healthy and things like that. But you have to feel much better about this team defending the run this upcoming season. Yeah, and it's. I hope it leads to the Lions having to use less assets to stop the run than they did in 2023. Like if if you can stop the run with lighter boxes – and you don't have to commit an extra safety or an, you can take a linebacker off the field and, you know, have another uh, defensive back out there, a th whether it's a third safety or another corner. Um, that just helps you to be a better pass, uh, you know, unit, right? So, yeah, uh, I think it, it's, a, it's a multiplier, man. I, I really do. I, you know, and then now the Lions have a bunch of players 
uh, along their front seven who are really good against the run, right? Like that's their, that's their cup of tea. Like whether it's Josh Pascal, uh, DJ reader, like we know Aleem's are good against the run, especially when he's at the three tech and not drawing double teams, like you said. So yeah, it's a multiplier. And I think everyone's going to feel it. I hope we get a, a big serving of DJ reader healthy this year, because he's going to be a big difference, big difference. Maker. Yeah, absolutely. So that's pretty much going to do it for this video, guys. If you guys want any more insight or even a few more clips of what DJ Reader does well, like Morgan said, he does have an article up on prideofdetroit.com. You can go check that out, get more of his thoughts on how he sees DJ Reader fitting on this team and where he feels like he'll have the most impact. And we're going to continue to keep doing some of these breakdowns of some of the other free agent signings that the Lions have. So if you have questions about Kevin Zeitler, Carlton Davis, uh, Marcus Davenport, we're going to break those guys down as well as get into some draft things in the next couple of weeks, uh, just in preparation for the NFL draft this year. So definitely stay tuned to the Pride of Detroit YouTube channel. Be sure to stay tuned to the PrideDetroit.com website just so you can keep track of any new articles that are coming out there. And like always, be sure to hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell. That way you can be notified anytime uh, we upload a new video or go live over here on YouTube. But with all that said, I'm Miko. He's Morgan. Thank you guys for taking the time to watch, and we'll be sure to catch you guys in the next one.